see you tonight. It's good to see you here. Glad you took some time again out of your schedule. And I hope you've prayed tonight. Come prepared to worship the Lord and put on the whole armor of God. So you may be able to withstand the evil, the evil one. Brought the shield of faith with you and quench the fiery darts. And uh, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord tonight. And um, I trust you've had a wonderful day. It's been beautiful. And... Um, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him. Amen. Appreciate Brother Casey. God bless him. He's been here before, and most of you know him. So, Brother Casey, you come on. Just mind the Lord and um, sing whatever God lays on your heart. Right. Just sing two or three chords. You want to be okay. Yes, sir. Mind the Lord. Say, I thank the Lord for saving my soul tonight and for all his many blessings. And I just want to thank him for, for being so good to me. And uh, I don't know why he, he loves me and does for me like he does. It's the way I act and do sometimes, but I love him tonight. And uh, I was sitting there last night, just, or just a few minutes ago, thinking about what to say tonight. And I wanted to share a blessing that I had. Uh, seems like when we get down and out, just think about how good the Lord's been to us. And I went to a, a shoe store on Sunday. And um, I was having to wait in line for a long time. The man at the cash register was just taking a long time. And the Lord told me, he said, uh, the Lord said, you need to invite that man to church. And uh, I was digging around for a track, and uh, I didn't have one. And I said, well, I'll catch him another time. So he gave me my change, and I almost got to the door. And the man stopped me. He said, I didn't give you the right amount of change. If you can come back, I'll have to call the manager up here to... Uh, get you your change back so here we are waiting for a few more minutes and i said all right lord you give me a second chance help me to to share with him invite him to church and ended up the man lived in the same community of the church i go to and uh, i've got to invite him to church i just want to i didn't say that to brag on me or anything but maybe to encourage you when the lord asked you to do something Maybe you never know. You may be the one tonight. He may ask you to do something. You may be the one that is the key to the service tonight. And I just want to thank the Lord and worship Him tonight. I've always had a place to sleep. Close to where food to eat.
thank the Lord for all his many blessings. And I, if I begin to thank him right now, I don't know when I'd ever be able to end. I love him tonight. And Dear Lord, I've asked you for so many things before, for strength to climb the mountains in my way. I've asked for strength and help. I've yesterday, and, or on Monday, and I was going to try to sing it at a church on Monday night, and I uh, didn't get the opportunity to, and uh, I love this song, and my, my dad recently was fixed up a, an old pickup, and I think it was maybe a 50 GMC, I'm not sure exactly what year it was, and, but you ought to have seen what a mess it was when he first got it, and uh, it was tore all to pieces, and uh, but it's amazing what a little patience and time can can do to something like that and uh, this man uh so with the primitive quartet he wrote a song about a, an old car he fixed up and what a mess it was in and he related it back to the mess of sin that he was in and how the lord came one day to where he was and fixed him up and uh, put him on the path to serve him and i hope this song will be a blessing to you Just an old pile of rubble, a 55 Chevrolet, someone
Amen. Hope you enjoyed that tonight. What a refreshing. And um, appreciate these two young men. They mean a lot to me. And um, I don't ask them to come because they're my friends, but I appreciate them very much. And uh, for me, it's kind of like it is, it's home. Um, Bethel is my home church. And there's a lot of people there I still love. And I'll always be home. But I appreciate you coming. appreciate you bringing the Lord with you. And um, Brother Justin, you've come tonight. Mind the Lord. Amen. Appreciate Brother Casey uh, coming this evening and singing. I'd never heard that last song. That's a joy. Some of you may have heard it. I'd never heard that. Uh, as he was singing, a thought had come across my mind. I was thinking of earlier today. It kind of goes along with the message. The value of something is worth what anybody's willing to pay for it. Uh, some people price something. Somebody say, it ain't worth that. Well, if somebody's willing to pay that for it, it is. I've always thought it's odd when somebody buys a house and then an appraiser goes out to see if it'll praise for that person, what that person's willing to pay for it. The appraisal should, the appraisal's already been done. The person's willing to pay for what it's worth. And, and I was thinking about that as Casey's singing that song. We may not look like much. When I look at myself and I look in the mirror and I know me how I know me, I'm not nothing. But to the God of glory, I was worth everything. God gave His only begotten Son for somebody like me. So when you go through those times and you feel like you're worthless, you're useless, and nobody cares, can I remind you that God of all creation cares. And you may feel worthless, but His worth is His only begotten Son. That's how much He cares and that's how much He values you. And I'm so thankful we've got a God that loves us just that much. No matter what muck and mire we may find ourselves in, there's a God that still cares and a God that still loves us and a God that still can. And I appreciate the opportunity to come tonight. And I just want to brag on the church. Uh, uh, it's good to see uh, all this technology that's taking place here. I'd heard that uh, you'd got one of our other young men, Brother Ben, up here. And I'm telling you what, now Ben, if you let him stay, he'll just keep putting stuff up. I'm telling you, he, he never runs out of ideas and he does a fantastic job. And uh, he, he, he's done a lot there at our church. I guess we're kind of the uh, experimental place. He'll do things and it works. And I'm so thankful God has given us technology. We can use it for his honor and his glory. You can use anything for bad or you can use anything for good. And I just say we need to use it for God's honor and his glory. And I do appreciate it. I think it's the first time I've ever been mic'd up here. So it sounds different to me. probably sounds different to y'all. But I appreciate the Lord more than anything else. I appreciate the Lord. He's been good to me. He's blessed me far beyond what I deserve. I've said it often. I'll say it again. And I'll say it till my dying day. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell right now. If I got what I deserved since I've been saved for what I've done, I'd be in hell right now. But God has been long-suffering to me. Boy, God's had some patience with me. He's looked down through eyes of love and compassion and grace. And, and that's the only reason I'm standing here today. I should be in hell, as the saying is, with my back broke right now. But God loved me and God seen fit to bring us together tonight. And I pray we'd magnify Him. It's not about us. It's not about one church or any other church. It's about His church. It's about the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about His body. And, and I pray tonight will be a help to you. The Lord uh, brought me to some scripture and a message. I'll begin in Lamentations chapter number 4. Lamentations chapter number 4. Uh, just be reading one verse of scripture here and get started. When you find your place, I just invite you to stand with me just simply out of respect to this book, this word. Not because I'm preaching, but because the word of God is being read. Let's just stand together when you find your place. Lamentations chapter number 4. And I'm just a simple preacher. I preach mostly to teenagers. And Casey, he's endured it for years as a teenager and now... Casey's one of the biggest helpers I've got. Casey, I can depend on him with it. It's kids. He helps me out with the little ones, and, and uh, he's, he's a great teacher of the Bible, and it's just amazing uh, how he can put it in the ways kids can understand things. And I'm just a simple preacher. I preach mostly to teenagers. You know that by now. So it will not be anything that's hard to swallow, uh, but I hope it will be a help to us tonight. Lamentations chapter number 4, verse number 1. be reading this one verse and getting started in the message. Jeremiah being the author of the book of Lamentations, obviously Lamentations means lamenting. He was lamenting. He was a broken man. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. 
as far as we know, there was not one convert under the ministry of Jeremiah, but Jeremiah was faithful, and he just kept preaching. But Jeremiah is lamenting here. In chapter number 4, verse number 1, Jeremiah says this, How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you realizing we're unworthy. Lord, don't even deserve to be saved. I have failed you miserably. But as a nine-year-old boy, April the 23rd, 1995, Oak Ridge Baptist Church, left-hand side of the altar, you met me there and you saved me by your marvelous grace. And it's nothing that I've earned. It's nothing that I could keep. It's nothing that I could work out. But it's all because of your gift. And I just praise your good name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for an opportunity. And thank you for calling me into the ministry and allowing me to come and to preach. And thank you, Lord, for the friendly faces that I see each and every time I'm able to come to this place. And Father, I pray, God, you'd bless them in a special way. God, as far as I know, this may be the last night of this revival. I, I pray, God, that truly hearts have been stirred. Hearts have been changed. Father, I stand in need as one here at the pulpit. I need my heart to be stirred. God, I need you to work on me. God, I need you to change me for eternity's sake, realizing that there's men, women, boys, and girls lost and undone we come in contact with each and every day. Father, I pray, oh God, I'd be the light that you'd call me to be. And Father, I'd be faithful in that which you've given me in this ministry. Father, I pray for this pastor. I pray, God, you'd use him. God, you know the needs of his life, his home, and even of his body. And God, I'm glad you can and you're able. So, Father, I pray now you bless this place. And I pray, God, if there's one that may be here tonight that's lost, they've never truly put their faith in Christ, I pray tonight would be that night. Father, I pray everything that's done would honor you above all things, for you're the only one that's worthy. We praise you. We give you glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> As I said, Jeremiah writing here this lamentation. And as Jeremiah is writing this, he makes a statement that's pretty profound. He says, how is the gold become dim? Now realizing there's not a question mark there. Jeremiah was not asking a question. Rather, Jeremiah was making a statement. How the gold has become dim. How is the most fine gold changed? Not that the... He's not asking how again. He's stating that it has. And, and then he goes on and says, The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. And as we see these things that Jeremiah is saying, In my mind I envision, I just envision dull looking gold. I envision gold that does not hold the value anymore. It just doesn't look like gold anymore. And then I can just see in my mind as I read the scriptures, people just dumping out precious stones into the street. Now there's one thing, I'll say this, my wife, when we got engaged, she wanted a certain kind of ring, a certain size, and I'd done my best to do just that. And we were at a ball game, I had a cousin playing in a little midget league football, and uh, we were at a ball game at, at, at North High School. And for some reason, she takes her rings off and puts lotion on. She's obsessed. I think she's got an addiction. Maybe some of these other ladies have an addiction with lotion. My wife's that way. She puts lotion on her hands all the time. And she pulls her rings off and puts lotion on. And I remember I was sitting there, and she had pulled her ring off, and she's putting... We weren't married yet. Almost didn't get married over this. And as, we're, as she's sitting there, and she's putting some lotion on, all of a sudden, I hear a little... Something has just bounced off that metal bleacher. I look at her and she looks at me and goes, oh no. Now she's upset in that moment because that's the ring that I'd given her to say, will you be my wife? And she'd said, yes. She's upset because it had sentimental value to her and it did me as well. But also had a dollar figure to me. I knew what I had paid for that ring. I knew what that little jewel was worth. And I knew what that gold, that uh, white gold band was worth. I knew what I had paid for it. Therefore, my heart's racing a little bit more than hers. Well, you don't just stand up and say, I've just lost a diamond ring under the bleachers. I'd had to go buy it back at the pawn shop if that's what happened. So, me and a buddy, I, I, I said, she's dropped a ring. So we go down there, and there's people tell this story a little different. We walked around and walked around. There's kids playing ball, and Benny probably remembers how this is. Kids play ball under them bleachers. And I'm thinking, I can't tell these young'uns. 
So we're just walking around, and all of a sudden, my buddy sees that ring. And he picks it up. And now there's two grown men hugging underneath them bleachers. <laughs> I don't know what those kids went home and told their parents. But we were both excited. We were both happy. And I was so relieved. And, and my fiance at the time, she still has that ring to this day. Praise the Lord. But you know, it was a precious stone. It was a precious thing to me. And it's not something that I, I said, honey, my Lord, how did, how did you do that? You've got to pay attention to that. We get I got excited. And, and still to this day, it's a precious thing in my sight. I remember it has sentimental value now more than the dollar figure. She's my wife. That's the ring I gave her. But nonetheless, I remember that time, and it's nothing we would just take diamonds and cast them out. We wouldn't take gold and just trample it down. But Jeremiah is describing what he's seeing now in the nation of Israel. And he's saying, how is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? Can I make this statement? Gold within itself does not become dim. And gold within itself does not change. It's all that's on the outside of that gold. In other words, it's something between what I'm looking at, my eyes can see, and the inside of that gold that's made it look changed. Gold is a precious metal. I've wrote down some notes here. Gold is a precious metal. The term precious is used because it's beautiful in color, limited in quantity, and lasting in character. King's crowns are most often made of gold with jewels also. Rings are made of gold. Currency was made of gold. In fact, many wars have been fought over gold. Much of the Americas were explored searching for gold. You could say that gold has been a moving force in the earth for thousands of years. But why? Gold is timeless. It's one of the few things that doesn't rot or decay on its own after coming into contact with air. Water doesn't wash it away. Fire doesn't burn it up. Gold coins are often found in shipwrecks miles deep in the ocean. And most everything has decayed in that wreck, but not the gold. Gold has lasting value. Gold becomes dim when it gets dirty. Gold is found in the ground and must be sorted out among all the other elements. I'm sure some of you have seen, I know there was a show, I, I've not watched it in many years, but there was a show came on, it was Gold Rush, and showed how the gold rush in Alaska and people were going up there to dig. And uh, that's fascinating. I'm, I was just fascinated because of the equipment. I love running equipment and just fascinated to see that works. And, and actually, there's a creek up towards Watauga County. I, I look at that creek and there's some holes in that creek and some big rocks. And I've told people many times, I bet there's gold in that rock. The way the current washes around, I said, there'd have to be gold buried deep in there. If there was ever gold around here, that'd be a place I'd look. And I was fascinated about that. But you know, as you uh, dig out gold, you just, they just dig in the creek. And they pull the gold up and the gold's with the rocks and the gold's with the sand and the dirt and everything else. And they take that gold and those buckets and they dump it in a wash plant. And the water washes over top of all that. But the gold is heavier. And as the water washes over that gold, all the dirt and all the other stuff will wash on down. But that gold will fall down in the bottom. Because the gold by weight is heavier. You take a gold nugget and you take a rock of the same size, the gold will outweigh the rock. Because the, min the minerals that it's made of. And so gold is a precious metal uh, that we dig and have to wash out to find it. And can I say this? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 26. How that we are washed by the water of the word. This book. When we allow it to wash on us, it'll show us those things that are precious. Why? It shows those things that hold more value. I would be the first one to say tonight, there are times in my life that I consider some things too precious that really don't have weight nor value. There are things I let come between me and those things that are truly precious and this Word of God, when I open it up and begin to let it wash over me, it shows me all that stuff that's in between me and the gold. But tonight I want to talk about a few things that I believe are precious. But unfortunately, in the minds of most of us from time to time, they've lost their value. 
And I want to help you tonight. I need help from the Lord and I need God to help me. We need God to wash the dirt out of our eyes that we might see what is precious yet again. God has given us these precious things. Some things, though, lose their value and weight in our mind. And just as, you, as this week is a week of revival, and I was thinking as we were singing the first song, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. That's what revival is all about. Revival is about us drawing nearer yet unto Him. God knows that we are but flesh and we've got to deal with this life of flesh. But there's some times that we need to set aside in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. And we need to draw over near to Him and just cuddle up with Him. There's nothing that makes me near after. And I'll get home tonight. I'm going to sit there in the chair. I'll get some milk. I'll warm it up for my little boy in the, micro, in the microwave. I'll go sit in my chair. He'll climb up there with me. And I'll let him have that cu little sippy cup of milk. There's nothing. I'd fight a bear or anybody else, anything else, try to come in my house at night and keep me from that time. I've done it with my daughter till she's almost five now. I'll do it with my boy till he's 15 or whatever and says it's weird, Dad. But there's nothing like that cuddling time with my youngins. But you know what? That's how God looks at us. And he says there's nothing like that cuddling time with my youngins. Remember, what kind of value do you have? The value that God paid with His only begotten Son. He wanted a relationship with you and I so much, he gave, he gave up the relationship with His only begotten Son. They'd had a relationship for all of eternity, but there was a space in time that God separated Himself from His only begotten Son that He might have an eternal relationship with you and I. Why? Because He loves us. And yet there's some precious things that I believe have lost some value. I want to look at those quickly tonight. First off, I believe his book has lost the preciousness in our sight. Look with me in the book of Samuel. I'll not have you turn to all these scriptures for the sake of time. But Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. The Bible said, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli... And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And as I've read this verse in my Bible, I've wrote down a note there beside it. What about these days? The word of the Lord was precious in those days of Samuel. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. But what about these days? What about these days? You know, it seems like when it comes time for me to focus and really want to get into the Word of God, Satan can come up with every other thing in my mind. Every other distraction. We have a walking, talking distraction on our hip most of the time in our cell phones. Always distracting. There's something always going on distracting us from this book, from the Word of God. But the Word of God was precious. The Word of the Lord was precious in those days. Job chapter number 23 verse number 12 says this. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job said, I've counted the Word of the Lord more important, more precious to me than any putting, even putting food in my mouth. How often do we take the Word of the Lord being that precious in our eyes? That we esteem it more than our necessary food. But the word of the Lord is precious. Simon Peter in chapter, uh, in 2 Peter chapter number 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. And our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We've got precious promises that we hold dear to our hearts. We love to sing about the the precious promises of the, that we know of God and of heaven and all the, those things. But where do we find those promises? It's in this precious book. Everything I know about God, everything God wants me to know about Him, I find in this precious book right here. 
There's one thing I try to teach my children. This book is precious. Not because this is Daddy's Bible, but because this is the Word of God. We don't put nothing on top of this book. When I get home tonight, I've got a place this book's going to go, and it'll sit there right beside my chair. Now, I look at my phone, and I read the Bible on my phone. I'm thankful that's good technology. But there's nothing like this book. When I put it in a car, coat don't go on top of this book. My youngin was in the back seat and she was climbing over the other day. And, and I heard my wife saying, Eden, get off your daddy's Bible. Why? Because my wife understands there's something precious about this book. See, I remember a time, and I don't want to be long-winded tonight, but I remember a time as an 18-year-old boy, I had surrendered to God to preach the gospel. My friends had went to college. All my buddies was gone. They was doing their things, and I would surrendered to God. And there was many nights I'd sit there on the couch, and I'd lay there in my bed, and the only thing that I had was a precious Bible. And I'd look into this, and I wanted this to look into me. And I fell in love with the Word of God during those, those months. I had friends gone. I had no girlfriend. I had nothing going on. But I fell in love with this book. But can I tell you this? Since those times, there have been times in my life it's just not quite as precious. I looked forward to Friday and Saturday nights back then. Just me and my Bible. But now oftentimes there's something else going on. I just don't have the time anymore. But his book is precious. His word is precious. Not only is his book precious, I believe his body is precious. Isaiah chapter number 13 in verse number 12, the Bible says this, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Matthew chapter 26, in verse number 7, look there with me if you will. Matthew 26, it'll be easy to find. Matthew 26, in verse number 7. Matthew 26, verse number 7. <clears throat> There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And we know, looking at the parallel gospel, that it was Judas saying that, and he just had his hand in the money bag, and that's all it was about. But why would somebody take something very precious to them and break it over the head of a man seated there? Because to her, that body was more precious than that ointment. In that moment, that may have been the most expensive thing that she had, but it didn't hold the value that that body held. And we know Jesus said, She's done this to my burying. And this part will not be taken away from her. Mary saw his body as precious. Mary saw his body as precious. One more person in the scripture that seen his body as precious. In Mark chapter number 15 verse number 43. Mark 15 and verse number 43. We read about the man named Joseph. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Here we are right before Easter holiday. Reading about the man named Joseph of Arimathea that went in to Pilate. When everybody, all his disciples had forsook him and fled. There's a man named Joseph of Arimathea that goes in and begs for that body. Why? Because to Joseph, that was precious. His body was precious. I believe his book is precious. I believe his body is precious. And now we look at a third thing. His blood is precious. Look with me in 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Verse number 18. The Bible says... For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received 
by tradition from your fathers. Verse number 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. As I read this verse, I can't help but to agree with the songwriter. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If there's one thing that we need to get a grip of tonight, that we need to get a hold of tonight, is that His blood is precious. Not because I declare it to be so, but because God declared it to be so. God said that you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. But I'm afraid oftentimes in our lives, with the distractions and everything else we've got going on, that blood is just not as precious anymore. I believe with the problems that many people in church and Christians have in general with sin and this and that and everything else going on, the habitual sin it seems they may have in their lives. It's simply because they don't understand that precious blood that it takes to wash away that sin. That's why I say I deserve hell tonight. Because since that precious blood has been applied to me, I've broken God's law. I've broken His commandment. But yet that blood is so precious and so valuable. There's not a sin. There's not nothing that I could do. I didn't earn it and I can't lose it. Because that precious blood has that much value and that much power. It's precious blood. Not only is his book precious, his body precious, and his blood precious. Fourthly, I believe his bride is precious. His bride is precious. Look with me in Ephesians if you would. Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 25. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What did he give? He gave that precious blood. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In other words, that it might be precious. It's been cleansed by something that's precious, and therefore it now holds precious value. His bride. His bride. What is the bride? You and I. The church. And I'm so thankful you're here on a Wednesday night. When there's so many other things going on. And I know some people can't help it. And some people couldn't help it if they, if they wouldn't help it if they could. Because the bride just don't hold the value to them. And as I was sitting counseling with a couple get, that I married uh, this past Saturday a few weeks ago. I said, value the church. Because there will be a time you're going to need the church. There's a time when our families can't help us, but there's somebody in the church. And that's why God ordained it to be that way. That we could help one another. That we could bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Why? Because Christ sees His bride as precious. And it certainly is. Acts chapter 20 and verse number 28. And I'll be done shortly. Acts chapter 20 and verse number 28. Looking... Again at the bride. The Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. How important is the church to the Lord Jesus Christ? It's so important that he purchased it with his own precious blood. In other words, he valued it more than he valued it himself. He valued it more than he valued himself when he gave himself willingly. But do we value the bride like that? 1 Peter chapter 2 
Verse number 6 says, Wherefore also is contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And verse number 7 says this, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. As we think about revival this week, we must register in our own minds and our own hearts just how precious is He. The Scripture says to those of us who believe, He is precious. In those times of life when it doesn't seem like He's just as precious as He once was, I need to go back and get a fresh glimpse of Calvary. And see, as that song said, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious, bleeding side. You know, Brother Raymond Marlowe, a deacon of our church, died just a couple months back. And on Brother Raymond, deathbed in the hospice house, he made this statement to his family. Either we believe this thing or we don't. He died with grace. He died with faith. Because he truly believed it. And in that moment, nothing else mattered. And today as I was preparing for this, I had to go and take inventory in my life and say, the things I'm doing currently, is it because I value the preciousness of the Lord? Or is it because I valued something else a little more precious? Sadly, I had to say there's some things just aren't in order. But I'm so thankful. I've got a God that loves me. In spite of me valuing things over His Son, I've got a God that loves me in spite of me being me. In spite of you being you, there's a God that loves you. But tonight, could I say, He's precious. His book is precious. His body is precious. His blood is precious. And this congregation of believers is precious. All because there's an eternal God in glory. Saw it worth buying. Saw it worth buying. So tonight, I'd ask you just how precious is He to you. Brother Benny, would you come and you dismiss however you see fit? We all stand on our feet, every head bowed, every eyes closed. Morning tonight, what do you count to be precious in your life, in your heart? What do you count to be precious? When you think of the word precious, what comes to your mind? What's on your thoughts? Is your church, is it on there? Your family on there? Your home on there? Kids, are they on there? More than that, is your relationship, Jesus Christ, is it on there? What is precious in your life? Hey, Casey. When I feel disheartened, forsaken,
about every eye closed. Boy, what a precious song to me. When my kids were little, and they're still little, and they needed to be rocked to sleep, boy, it's a song I sung to them. Boy, it's precious tonight. Is he to you, the Lord? I mean, just how precious, how willing are you to do something for him? Boy, if he's real to you, Boy, it means the most to you. You'll be willing to do anything for them. Them kids, boy, you'll, boy, you'll walk to the end of the earth for them. Boy, if God meant that much, what would we do for him? I think about little Annabelle. Boy, she come up here, she sung last night, opened that mouth. Somebody taught her about how to sing, how to, boy, just let her go. Boy, that's what we ought to do. He ought to be so, so precious to us. Makes no difference where we are, where we go, what we say. As long as he is happy with us. Boy, something to that. I don't know about you tonight. But the, one of the most important things to me is that I'm right with him. And he's happy with me. Sing it again, Billy Casey. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this man of God that's come. Lord, thank you for the songs we've heard. Lord, thank you, Lord God, that you gave your son. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving you life. And Almighty God, thank you, Lord, that it's still real to me. God, I thank you, Lord, for a sweet spirit touch. Lord, that I know in my heart. Lord, I thank you for stirring my heart. Lord, you tell me, they that sow in tears, Lord, shall reap in joy. <coughs> Lord, I love you. Too. Lord, I pray, God, you take our church and use it. I pray, God, you know our hearts. I pray, Lord, that been something said this uh, these nights, Lord, of, uh, of, uh, Lord, to encourage our hearts. Lord, I pray, God, it would be something that we can hold on to, something that's different, Lord, something that's real, something that's out of the ordinary. Lord, I pray that the words that have been spoken, the songs that have been sung, Lord, they'd ring in our ears, that we can't get them out. Lord, I pray, God, that they would stay fastened in there, Lord, that they'd bounce around, Lord, that they'd be burned and seared upon the table of our hearts, Father, Lord, that we'd have a concern. Uh, Lord, for our loved ones, and to, Lord, to be right with you, God, but most of all, you'd be happy with us. Lord, we thank you tonight for this service again. Thank you for every heart that's here, for those that couldn't be here, the very lost in this world, that one that's near to hell. Lord, I pray, God, you touch them, that they'd be a Christian, God, be able to walk by, God, and have enough encouragement about them and conviction about them, Lord, that they would share the gospel. They'd have one more opportunity to make things right before it's too late. Lord, I love you tonight. Thank you for my church. Lord, thank you for what they mean to me. Lord, thank you that I, I have a church home. And Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be the pastor. Lord, Lord, I know we stumble and falter. But God, I thank you for helping us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for using us. Thank you for being willing to use us. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the very breath I breathe. The heartbeat that's in my chest, Father. For these things you ask in your name. And thank you for them. Amen. And amen. Appreciate you being here tonight. Hope there's been something said to stir your heart. Say a word on anybody's heart before we go.